Infosonics, accessible infographics for people who are blind using sonification and voice. Hi, my name is Leona Holloway and I'm presenting on behalf of my co-authors, Chatai Gonku, Alon Ilsa, Matthew Butler and Kim Marriott. We're from Monash University Inclusive Technologies Group in Melbourne, Australia. So before we get started, please do use headphones if you can, as I'll be presenting some um, stereo audio samples. Let's start by looking at two representations of the same data. The first is a table of raw numbers. It's great for the detail if you're already familiar with the data and you know what you're looking for. But if you're a casual viewer and you just want the overview, then you're much more likely to want a visualization like this one. So now we can easily see that the data is representing COVID-19 confirmed cases, deaths and recovery, and we can gain an idea of the trends. The data is unstable from one day to the next, but there was a small peak in late March, early April, and then a much bigger peak in July, August, with recoveries lagging around two weeks after confirmed cases. The graph also gives text labels for relevant events, such as when government restrictions were imposed. This is an example of an infographic, a data visualization with an underlying narrative designed to be easily understood and appealing to a wide general audience. We've all been flooded with infographics since the start of the COVID-19 pandemic, from virus spreading simulations and flattening the curve graphs to geographic hotspots and daily updated case numbers like those we've just seen. All of us, that is, except those who are blind or have severe vision impairment. So what is the non-visual equivalent of an infographic? Sonification is an audio representation of data or visual media. It can be used as a way of highlighting important information, as in the case of an EKG. Sonification can also be used as a way of detecting patterns in complex data or as a starting point for music composition. And of most importance today, sonification is a method for conveying visual information to people who are blind or have low vision. For example, this is the shape of a parabola as a sonification with higher notes representing high points on the y-axis and white noise below the x-axis. Sonification offers several advantages over other accessible formats for infographics of fast changing news. It can be produced quickly, accessed online, and it gives an overview. However, in a previous study, we found that not many people who are blind or have low vision were actually using sonification. It's mainly used by specialists who've invested time into becoming experts into the required software and understanding the tones used. That's why we developed Infosonics, combining sonification with a verbal introduction that describes the graph. COVID-19 in Victoria. It also describes the tones used. Pitch goes up in proportion to the total confirmed daily cases of COVID-19. For example, zero cases. In both ears, each bleep represents a death from COVID-19 along with verbalised labels overlaid on the sonification. Border with New South Wales closed, Melbourne re-enters stage three restrictions, face coverings made mandatory, August 2nd state of disaster declared and stage four restrictions imposed. Alon, who's a musician as well as a researcher, experimented with the speed and tones to maximise ease of understanding and to assist with storytelling. We compared our infosonic of COVID-19 rates with its more standard sonification that followed guidelines for speed and tones, but it does still have an audio introduction. Both the infosonic and the sonification were produced by converting data to MIDI files that were then imported into Ableton Live. We also produced a text description for comparison. It gives the axes, the general shape of the graph line, approximate values at key points, and the event labels as a list. Evaluation was conducted with 18 people who are blind or have low vision remotely over Zoom. They shared their screen with the researcher and navigated the web pages and controls themselves. The order of presentation was counterbalanced. 
In general, the text description was praised as being well-written, trustworthy, providing a good level of detail, and it was easy to understand. We found that the text description was also faster to use than the audio. Whether Infosonic shone was in terms of engagement. While there was no clear pattern revealed through self-ratings, the Infosonic definitely elicited a lot more oohs and ahs, and it was likened with other forms of entertainment. So there were comments like, I nearly got up and danced, and it sounded like a horror movie. The Infosonic was also as good, if not better, as the text description in terms of giving the overall shape of the graph. As one participant said, the sounds gave it more of a picture as if I was looking at a graph. The sonification was least preferred because it was more difficult to understand without the spoken labels or the use of creative audio decisions. Overall, the text description and the infosonic were equal first in terms of overall preference. However, because they had different strengths, we would advocate for both formats as complementary to one another rather than providing just one. Based on the feedback of our participants, we can propose the following design guidelines for Infosonics designed for accessibility. The easy to use controls allow for access by a wider range of users. The option to turn tracks on and off was the most important of these controls. The introduction was considered essential, but it should be possible to turn it off after the first one or two listens. The spoken annotations were also considered essential. Participants also wanted data points to be given when the audio is paused. And finally, participants wanted to adjust the speed of the synthetic voice and the speed of the sonification separately from one another. Please check our paper for further suggestions. So there's still much more to explore in sonification for accessibility. Even though we designed our Infosonic for ease of understanding, we still observed a learning effect. So how much and what type of training is required? And what's the right balance between standardization, customization, engagement, and understanding? And once we have these answers, we need a tool to quickly and easily create Infosonics for timely information access. So that's all we have time for today, but please do contact us if you have any questions or you're interested in collaborating. You could email me at leona.holloway at monash.edu or you could Google Monash Inclusive Technologies. Thanks very much. <laughs>